In this video, we're going to deploy the function to Azure. Now, before I do that, there's one change that I need to make here. So remember the function.json file. And this binding up here has this auth level key. And right now it's set to function. I need to change that to anonymous because what will happen is when this is deployed to Azure, if it's using function authentication, it's going to require a key in order to in order for the client to be able to use the uh, to invoke the HTTP function. So changing it to anonymous will allow anything. Probably wouldn't want to do this in production depending on your case, but to make things simpler, we'll just leave it here. Now I'm going to continue to use the CLI and in the next couple of videos, you'll see why I'm showing you the CLI before showing you the Azure tools. I think if you see how things work with the CLI first, that it makes that it makes understanding what the Azure tools do much easier because the Azure tools abstract an awful lot for you. And that's okay, but you should know what's going on underneath. So first of all, I need to install the Azure CLI command line interface. And this can take a while, so I'll speed it up through the magic of video. All right, now that that's done, see that we have this new AZ tool installed. And there's a lot you can do with it. But first thing you need to do is log in. So the command for that's gonna be AZ login. And it works best on a code space I found if you use the um, flag use device code. And so I'll copy the code and open this link in another window, paste the code in, tell it what account I want to log in with, and it'll show me what subscription I've used over here. There we go, great. So now what I need to do is create a new resource group. Remember we saw in the last month that with the app service, everything needs to go in a resource group. So there's a command to do this with the AZ command line tool. So that's group, create, need to give it a name, which I'm going to call mempy yt yt rg for research group, and then it needs to be in a location which I'll use East US. All right, that only takes a few seconds. Now I need to create a storage account. The um, functions are going to want a storage account, so I'll say az storage account create, give this a name, going to call this mempy yt you can't use hyphens in the storage account name it wants to know what resource group to put this in that's going to be the one i just created mempy yt rg again a location and i'll use continue to use east us and then finally a SKU. and this basically determines features and among other things the pricing level so double dash skew and what I'm going to use is the standard LRS skew. All right that I sped that up through the magic of video it doesn't take too long but longer than you would probably want to sit there and watch it but it, but it has finished and now I'm going to create a new function app just like with the app service that we saw last month the functions all live inside of a function app. So I'll say az function app create, and this is a long one, so I'm going to spread it across multiple lines. Now, remember there are three tiers of function apps, and I'm, I'm going to be using the consumption plan, which is the pay-as-you-go, and that's the one that has a free tier with it. So double dash consumption, got to make sure I type this correctly, consumption plan location. And that's going to be East US, keep everything in the same place, consumption plan location. All right, and then need to tell it a runtime. And that's going to be Python. And then a runtime version. And this is basically the version of Python you want to use. Now, I think I said earlier, but I'm going to reiterate that Python 3.11 currently is not supported even though at the time of recording it is the latest release version. Python 3.10 is actually in preview, and that's the version that I'm using on this, on this code space. Uh, but I haven't had any problems with 3.10. In production, you'd probably want to look at 3.9 for now. But at any rate, this should work. The version of functions that we're using, remember that we installed 
the uh, version 4 of the function tools. So functions version 4, the name of the function app, and I'm going to call this mempy yt functions. Uh, the OS type, so you can run on Linux or Windows, except with Python, uh, in which only Linux is supported, so that's your only choice here. Again, everything needs to go inside of a resource group. And finally, it wants to know what storage account to use. And let's see here, I think I typed everything correctly. Now, it may seem like nothing is happening and it doesn't show any, this particular command does not show any progress. So I'll go ahead and speed the rest of it up. All right, so what you'll see up here is this warning. And it says that uses a consumption plan has been successfully created, but it's not active until content is published. In other words, until a function is deployed. Okay, it says using either the Azure portal or the functions core or the functions core tools. We're going to be using the function core tools. Uh, so make sure that I'm inside of the uh, directory or folder where my project is located, and then I can use func Azure function app publish, and then the name of the app that I want to publish to, which is mempy yt functions. All right, and you see here the remote build succeeded and that the uh, URL to invoke this HTTP trigger is right here. So what I'll do is I'll go, I'll copy this, and then I'll go over to RESTbook, get, and then I'll give it a coin of Solana, and there we go, there's the price of Solana. Now notice I did not have to include the GitHub token up here, like I did with, like I did when we were testing this locally. Again, this is something actually that anybody can access. Uh, it doesn't have to be inside a code space. It can be, we could write our, um, our click command line client to take advantage of this, and we don't have to use, and we don't have to have a special token. All right, that's how you deploy via the command line. In the next video, we'll look at how you can we can start all over and go through the whole process of developing and deploying an Azure function using the Azure tools inside of Visual Studio Code.